Hello and welcome to the Charges and Fields tutorial where we're going to be learning how to create electric fields using the PHET Charges and Fields simulator. The first thing you're going to want to take note of is the charges here on the right and the electric field sensors here. This is how the screen will look when you first start out and this is the field where you're going to be placing your charges and your sensors. So each of these charges, the positive ones are 1 nanocoulomb and the negative ones are negative 1 nanocoulomb. And there are a few different features you can do to simulate electric fields. So I'm going to pull out a positive charge and just place it in the middle. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and hit show electric field. And this is a bunch of arrows that depicts the magnitude and direction of the electric field at many different points. The magnitude is indicated by the saturation of the color in the arrow and the direction is indicated by the direction of the arrow. If you hit direction only it gets rid of the magnitude and allows you to see the whole field. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring in a negative charge. And now you notice how the field is different. What I can actually do now is bring out an electric field sensor. I'm going to get rid of this negative charge. Now the electric field sensor depicts the magnitude of the electric field a acting at that one point. The magnitude indicated by the length and the direction indicated by the direction of the arrow. If I hit show numbers down here, it'll show me exactly the magnitude of the electric field and the direction. There's a grid you can use also if you wanted to calculate the angles yourself. Now I'm going to go and bring back the negative charge. Notice how the behavior of the sensor changes. It's going to be pulled out here and then the arrow changes. It's going to be pulled down into the negative charge. And something you can actually do is position this sensor far enough away so that it's not too long and then make a little chain of sensors. And in doing so, you'll construct a partial electric field line. You can't go too far, otherwise you'll end up crossing over the charge. Another thing you can do, if you wanted to actually calculate the field yourself, or do other calculations, is you can pull out a tape measure. And this tape measure allows you to measure the distance between these two points. You can grab this little point here and move it around. Bring it out to this charge. They're 2.74 meters apart. That's something you can use during your calculations. Now this isn't a simulator just designed for you to place one charge here and one charge there. There are other things you can do. Other options. This is my best simulation of a capacitor. Bunch of positive charges up here, bunch of negative charges down there, and an E-field sensor that behaves much in the manner that you would expect. If I positioned this so that you can get straight field lines, you would generally see that the lines are pointing with a relatively high magnitude away from the positive charge and toward the negative charge. Something to remember though is that these are not solid boards with a single charge on them they're little bitty dots and the simulation is very sensitive so you'll notice all these arrows are not actually pointing directly towards the electrons. They're actually pointing, some, some of them are pointing a little farther away and that just has to do with the construction of this up here. Another one you can do that I created is a bucket where you have a single positive charge up here and a bunch of negative charges arranged in the shape of a bucket and you can bring this sensor down and see how the electric field changes at each point. A couple more features I wanted to show you are the low res and high res voltage which just the I'm just going to use the high resolution one and this actually this isn't a very good depiction this is much better. This is a graphic representation of the 
level of voltage or the magnitude of the voltage here all all throughout the field and this is a much simpler one and the low res just makes it lower resolution one of the interesting things about this one is that I actually should have added more positive charges here. You'll notice it's it's slowing down a bit because it's trying to recalculate. This takes this takes a lot of uh, this takes a lot of power. So if I repositioned and put more charges here, you'll notice that the red field grows, and I can actually measure this using this tool down here, the equipotential and voltage tool. And what you can do is you can position it at any point and it'll show you by saturation of red or blue color the magnitude of the voltage at that point. And I keep saying magnitude of the voltage but voltage is a scalar value so it's just the voltage. And it actually gives you a numerical value right here. Another thing you can do with this is plot equipotential lines. If I place this little reticule here and I predicted what the equipotential line would look like, I could then hit the plot button to see what it looked like. And you can continue to do that all the way up just as, as much as you want and get a relatively stable image of what the equipotential lines look like at various points. And that's it for now.